So it may not look like it, but what this is here is a sketch. Some time ago we were at a friend's house and we noticed they had this nice big lazy Susan on their dining table and they really liked it and I was intrigued by it and I thought hey that would make a quick and simple little project but you know our table isn't the same size as their table and I just wasn't sure how big of a lazy Susan I would need so I just threw one together in an evening or afternoon I don't remember didn't even put any finish on it we've had it on the table for a couple of weeks trying it out and seeing how we like it and the size and the size is wrong um, for us this is uh, just a little over 12 and a half inches wide and we find it to be too small our friends have a 16 inch one and um, I want to make this at least two inches bigger so I'm thinking that I might even go up to 70, 17 inches wide for this lazy Susan maybe 16 and a half we'll see it's a fairly simple project top and bottom. The trick is in how they go together so that it is hidden. You cannot see the mechanism. The mechanism is just a little ball bearing plate that joins the two pieces together. Now you might have already realized that there's a problem because my planer will only go up to a little over 12 inches wide, 12 and a half inches wide, 12 and a half inches wide. So for uh, this project, since I need something uh, 17 inches wide, I got a bit of a challenge there. So I've already prepared the stock and I brought it down to finish thickness and I was just very careful with clamping it together so that this is nice and flat because I can't run it through the planer anymore. Now, the piece for the base, I'm probably going to make that 10 or 11 or maybe even 12 inches wide so that can still go through the planer and I'm going to do that now. I cut my blanks into squares on the table saw because I want to connect the corners so that I can find the center for drawing a circle, but also I need to be able to mark the spots where I'm going to drill the mounting screws for the bearing. So I'm taking the ball bearing and I'm placing it over the X that I've drawn, connecting the corners, and I'm finding where the lines show up through the mounting holes. And I'm using the bearing itself to mark out a circle. So I'm using the bearing kind of like a compass here because I want to excavate the base so that I can sink the bearing into it. And I need to have room for the top piece to turn. So you might ask, why am I putting all these marks on if I'm going to route it out? Because then that's going to route away all my marks. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill deep into these mounting holes and I'm going to drill deeper than what I plan to excavate and that's so that way I'll still be able to find where the mounting holes are for the bearing later on. I don't have a fancy beam compass. I just have a piece of wood with some holes drilled in it at the right spot and then I put my all at the one end and I stick a pencil in the hole at the other end and I use that to make myself a circle. Simple works. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to excavate for the bearing. I'm going to use that with the uh, with the router here. I have a bottom cleaning bit so the, the card by goes right across so it should clean out the bottom nicely and I'm just going to put it in here and I'm going to do it freehand. I'm only doing it in the bottom, I'm not doing it in the top, that way I'm only doing it in one piece of wood. I'm doing it freehand because there's no reason not to. Here's my practice piece and you know you cannot see the excavation, it's hidden between the two pieces of wood so nobody's going to see if you uh, wobble off the side a bit. So really there's, there, you, you could set up a, a nice template so you get a perfect circle or I could do it on the CNC but there's no reason for it. Just put it in the router, do it freehand, slow and steady. So with the hole nicely excavated, I can bring this over to the bandsaw where I'm going to cut out the circle and then I'll finesse it on the disc sander. My next stop is the router table where I'm going to round over the edges, top and bottom, of all the pieces just to smooth it all out and give it a nice gentle edge. That'll also hide any you know imperfections in the perfection of the circle as well. 
These are going on a kitchen table, so of course they're going to get wet sooner or later. So I want to do a nice polyurethane coating. But first I'm going to wipe on a little bit of shellac, which I think will give a nice bit of a head start on the color because polyurethane, you know, it's just going to be so clear. So, and shellac they call sort of the universal sealer, so it can go underneath anything. So after the shellac, I wiped and brushed on several coats of polyurethane and we're almost done. And then I need to just fit in the bearing. Now you can screw in to, to the bottom, but then you also need access this way to screw in. So you need to put in an excess hole. So here was my sketch piece and on the bottom here, and I drilled two access holes. You only really need one. Um, I kind of like things to be symmetric. Um, you can see, hopefully there, that, uh, access to the screw. So you can fasten the screw to the bottom and the top and then you spin it to do the other ones. So yeah, you're always going to need to have a hole like that. So here are the four mounting holes for the bearing plate and then I will just turn the bearing so that it's, you know, roughly 90 degrees. And then I'll make a mark there and now I need to drill a hole there. And it needs to be, you know, a hole large enough that you can fit a screwdriver in. So I totally forgot that I'm going to be drilling into this after I've already finished it. So I need to just wipe a little bit of polyurethane inside this hole just to help seal it up. Do that for a minute before I uh, move on to finishing things off. So I want to screw the bearing into the base first. But I've excavated the base, so I can't count on this thickness, so I need some rather small screws. I check them against the holes that I drilled through so I can just see, just reassure myself that they're not going to go poking out the other, other end. Now I can see the holes here from the previous time, but I'm still going to make sure I've pre-drilled. I've got a little flag set here matching the uh, depth of the screws that I'm using. I'm going to fill in. Just to make sure, yeah, probably don't even need much. Looks like I'm just going in about a quarter of an inch there at the bottom. Let's set this in place. And of course I don't have my screwdriver. Robertson, of course. Green-handled Robertson. So there you go. Here's my new 16 inch Lazy Susan on my 41 by 62 inch table. This is Cherry, this is Ash. Quick and simple project. You glue a couple of boards together, you glue a couple of more boards together, make a few circles, slap in a Lazy Susan bearing and you have a nice project. And so there you go. As always, I'd like to thank you for coming by and spending some time in my shop. I hope you found something interesting and enjoyable. And to all the ladies out there named Susan, I'd like to offer my heartfelt apologies. I have no idea why it's called the Lazy Susan. Uh, I'm sure it's probably, you know, some patriarchal sexist thing from history that we should all be embarrassed about. So I'm sorry. To all the men out there named Sue, I'm not going to apologize. Your parents should have already apologized to you for naming you that. Said my name is Sue. How do you do?